The sinking of the RMS Titanic in April 1912 is one of the most infamous maritime disasters in history. An unsinkable ship, a fateful iceberg, and over 1,500 lives lost, the tragedy has been dissected from every angle imaginable. But there's one overlooked question that adds a fascinating layer to this story. Why wasn't the Titanic made with stainless steel? Today we're going to dive into the metallurgy of the Titanic. What materials were used, what the limitations were at the time, and how the absence of stainless steel might have been a deadly factor in the ship's fate. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. The Titanic was constructed using the best materials available in the early 20th century, or so they believed. Her hull was made primarily from steel plates, riveted together with iron rivets in some places and steel rivets in others. At the time, this was state-of-the-art shipbuilding. But here's the catch. The steel used in the Titanic wasn't like the high-quality ductile steel we have today. It was brittle, especially in cold temperatures. And this brittleness wasn't well understood in 1912. Metallurgy as a science was still developing and engineers simply didn't have the tools or data to understand how cold ocean temperatures could drastically affect the toughness of steel. As for stainless steel, well, it didn't even exist in the form we know today. So, why didn't the Titanic have stainless steel? The simple answer is, it hadn't been invented yet. Stainless steel as we know it was discovered just two years after the Titanic sank. In 1913, British metallurgist Harry Brearley discovered that adding chromium to steel made it resistant to rust and corrosion. This new metal, stainless steel, would go on to revolutionize countless industries, from medical tools to cutlery to architecture. But in 1912, no one had access to this wonder material. Even if Brearley had made his discovery a few years earlier, it's unlikely the shipping industry would have adopted it immediately. New materials take years, sometimes decades, to be tested, accepted, and mass-produced on an industrial scale. And the Titanic, under immense time pressure and budget considerations, was built using the best-known materials of the day not the hypothetical innovations of tomorrow. Now, while stainless steel would have certainly helped resist rust over time, the real issue in Titanic's demise wasn't corrosion. It was structural weakness at impact. The Titanic struck an iceberg and the steel plates and rivets failed catastrophically. Post-disaster investigations and modern research show that the steel used in Titanic's hull became especially brittle in the freezing waters of the North Atlantic. When the iceberg tore along the ship's starboard side, the steel didn't bend, it fractured. Microscopic analysis of recovered steel from the wreck shows a high sulfur content, low manganese levels, and a coarse grain structure, all of which contributed to its brittleness. In cold temperatures, good steel should absorb energy by deforming slightly. Titanic steel, however, shattered like glass in places. And let's not forget the rivets, an often overlooked weak point. Titanic used two kinds of rivets, steel and wrought iron. The steel rivets were stronger and used in the ship's central sections, while the iron rivets were used in the bow and stern. Why? Because the shipyards building Titanic didn't have the hydraulic equipment to install steel rivets in those areas. Iron rivets were hand-driven, and unfortunately, many of them were of poor quality. Investigations found that some of the iron rivets contained high levels of slag, a byproduct of smelting that made them more likely to shear off under stress. When the iceberg struck, some of these weaker rivets popped out, 
allowing the hull plates to separate. If stronger materials had been used throughout, perhaps even something as tough and corrosion-resistant as stainless steel, it's possible the ship might have survived longer or even avoided sinking altogether. So, would stainless steel have saved the Titanic? Maybe, but it's not that simple. Stainless steel is far superior in terms of corrosion resistance, but the specific type of stainless steel needed for shipbuilding, one with both strength and ductility at low temperatures, wasn't developed until much later. Modern stainless steel alloys can withstand ice impacts far better than early 20th century steel, and they resist the kind of brittle fracture that doomed Titanic. But even if stainless steel had been available in 1912, it would have been prohibitively expensive and incredibly difficult to work with on such a large scale. Ships weren't built with stainless steel even decades later. It was simply too advanced and too costly for early 20th century infrastructure. However, if a ship like the Titanic were designed today, modern metallurgy would give it a fighting chance. High toughness steel, welded hulls, GPS, radar, sonar, it would be a completely different beast. And yes, stainless steel would almost certainly be a major part of the design. Ultimately, the Titanic paid the price for the limitations of its time. Its builders weren't careless. They used what they had. And in many ways, the Titanic was a marvel of early 20th century engineering. But the disaster highlighted the dire need for better materials, better testing, and a deeper understanding of how environmental conditions affect structural integrity. In the years following the sinking, steel quality standards improved, ship designs changed, and material testing became more rigorous. The science of metallurgy advanced by leaps and bounds, and the Titanic played an important if tragic role in that progress. So the next time you think about the Titanic, think beyond the romantic tragedy, the lavish interiors, or even the lifeboat shortage. Think about the steel, the cold, the rivets, the limitations of an era that hadn't yet discovered stainless steel. In a way, the Titanic didn't just sink because of an iceberg. It sank because the world hadn't yet caught up to the materials it truly needed to conquer the ocean. And as we build better, stronger, more resilient ships today, the Titanic's lessons and the question of what if continue to shape our future. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.